Hello, hello. You're listening to another episode of Lilia's Sunday podcast. I think I should start talking about something like the weather now because the weather is actually a good way to start a conversation. Even if this is a podcast where only one person is speaking, and that's me, obviously, Lilia from Lilia's Sunday podcast. But incidentally, the weather in Kiev is okay. It's not perfect for this time of year. Uh, perfect would be lots of snowfalls, minus five or minus eight, when all kids have red cheeks after spending some time outdoors. Though when I was a kid, I used to have red cheeks all the time, regardless of the season, but I'm very happy it's all gone now. I think I think many kids have those red cheeks thing when they're young, but then with the age, it, it basically just, you know, just goes away and you don't have this problem anymore but some people think it might be cute. Uh, in Russian uh, we have an expression which is literally translated into English as to, to catch a bullfinch. That's when your face, mainly your cheeks, uh, go red after being outdoors in winter, especially when snow got on your face, maybe after playing snowballs or something, you know. Uh, so bullfinch, bullfinch is a small bird which lives on the trees in winter and it has a black uh, and he has a black head and a red chest and looks like a sparrow uh, perhaps a bit bigger than a, than a sparrow but it's a bird we usually associate with winter so uh, i may sound extra geographically narrow minded but can anyone tell me if you have bullfinches in other countries just let me know in the comment section if you have any bullfinches in the, in your country in winter i'd love to know if you do well this is this is all geographically interesting yeah you know to compare differences between uh, our countries okay so in ukraine uh well i i, d I don't tend to see them anymore i'm afraid yeah i don't but i think that uh when i was a little child we used to have lots of bullfinches okay so in this podcast i'd really love to talk about a modern tendency which is really in fashion now in Ukraine and Russia. I don't know whether it's true for your country, but here I think it's getting quite popular. It's commonly believed here that the younger you start learning a language, the more fluent you become in the future. Well, this is definitely true. More parents are hiring native speaker teachers uh, of English for their children who are four, five or seven year old uh, kids, right? And they they tend to to have uh, native English speakers to teach them English. Um, okay, so for little kids who didn't have any exposure to English when they were born, uh, but now their parents think it is a good idea to expose them to an authentic source of the English language and pay native speaker to teach their child correct and natural English. So it sounds pretty good when you first hear it and it's now widely believed that the earlier you start learning the language and listening to authentic English, the sooner you learn it. I'm afraid the reality is not as positive as parents would imagine. So in fact, most native speaker teachers point out that kids start feeling stressed when they have lessons and they 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 simply don't learn anything and very often can't understand what is being required. So what what parents want to do, uh, from the parents' point of perspective, what parents want to do is raise a bilingual child. But in fact, they often forget that if you if you want to raise a bilingual child, your kid needs to be exposed to a source of native English on the everyday basis. Your child won't be bilingual if they hear English a few hours during a week. No, they won't. Okay. So if you only have your native speaker teacher coming round to your house or flat, uh, for example, just uh, two hours a week or three or four hours a week, your child won't simply learn English and they won't learn to speak it naturally. They'll certainly learn some words. But at the same time, they'll feel after a massive level of stress, which is, I guess this is not something that you, you're seeking, right? Not something that you're looking for. Uh, so, um, you know, on the other hand, um, some parents choose not to hire a native speaker, but they often complain that one of them, usually the one who speaks better English, speaks only English at home. Uh, yeah, so... Okay, I think I need to start again. So parents often complain that uh, one of them 
and this is the person who usually speaks better English, speaks only English at home. But their hope to bring up their child to be bilingual doesn't work. Or the kids start speaking English very early, but they have their parents' accent and make the same mistakes. And this is pretty logical. You can't expect your child to be a perfect native like English speaker. If someone making a uh, typical for that first language mistakes taught this little person. And that's the reason why, pa why parents often decide to trust their job to a native speaker. The only thing they forget is that the native speaker doesn't stay in their house 24-7. They only come for a limited period of time and leave when the time of the lesson is over. So, 95% out of 10, I believe... Oh, sorry, uh, just, I'm a brilliant mathematician here. Okay, 95% out of 100, I believe, if parents hire a native speaker to teach their child English... What actually happens is they get feeling uncomfortable and put her under lots of stress because they can't simply start to understand another language if they only listen to it for two or three hours a week. So what is important when learning a foreign language is consistency. For all kinds of learners, including both young and adult learners of English, it's essential to do some language work every day. And by saying every day, I literally mean every day. If you don't do something consistently, but occasionally, uh, you only stay at the same level, but you, you, you'll never move up to the next level in this way. So, um, you know, if, if you want to maintain your level in this way, it's perfect. But if you want to have some progress, you need to do English work every day. It doesn't have to be boring. You can easily make studying fun by listening to and reading what you like. Okay, so you don't have to read uh, dozens of articles about environment if you're not if you're not particularly fond of environmental topics or something like that. So nobody makes you do that if you don't want to do that. Okay, so uh, you know you could just just I don't know if you if you're really into cars, you can read something about cars. Okay. So don't have to read about environment, which you hate, if you like reading about cars. So read about cars. It's fine. Yeah, you can read whatever you want. So I'm currently working on an episode about native speaker versus local teachers of English. So please stay tuned and make sure to check my Podomatic webpage for updates next Sunday. If you uh, don't know what my Podomatic uh, webpage address is, uh, I'm going to say it now. It's uh, liliacardenace.podomatic.com, which is liliacardenace. Uh, okay, let me spell it for you. It's L-I-L-I-A-K-A-R-D-E-N-A-S.podomatic.com. And I think that's about it for today. I'll have to round off this podcast, but I think we need to sum it up a bit. So, okay, um... I've basically come up with three ideas for English learning in this podcast. First, don't expect your children to speak flawless English if you make mistakes yourself. And the only source of spoken English they have is you, right? OK, so they can't start speaking better English than you do because you are the model for them of, of the correct English as they take it, right? OK. So the next point is that native speakers are not a solution if you want to teach your children English in an early age, right? I know that some people hire a native speaker to live in their house, basically to be like part of their family and stay in their house while the child is small and this person will be talking to a child and teaching them English. And that's a different story. But here in this podcast, I'm only talking about like a native speaker coming around and, and just being around the child uh, for about a couple of hours a week, which is not a solution. OK. And the last, the final tip for today is that you have to study English every day. Even a bit of work will do. But you need to study at least something to bring you up to the next level. That's what you have to do, right? So consistency is important. Okay, it is important. Listen to what you like. Um, read whatever you need, whatever you read, whatever you want to read. So if you like, I don't know, if you, if you really like reading like um, 
science fiction in your language, in your mother tongue. So please read science fiction in English. It's great. So uh, yeah, there are lots of science fiction authors in English. So yeah, and, and you can even just go further and read uh, English stuff without translation, which is fantastic. Right, okay, so uh, I'm going to say bye-bye now because that's the end of the podcast. Keep listening to Lily's Sunday podcast next Sunday. A bit of preview. Um, I'll be talking about this notorious argument on whether native speaker teachers of English are better than local teachers. So uh, make sure to check uh, my uh, VK and Facebook profiles for uh, the latest episodes of Lily's Sunday podcast. And keep in touch. Bye-bye.